Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vato speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the profit not the re -ups. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown from the base The Corvette you sold dope out of, you rapped about selling dope out the Corvette. Your 750, it, all the shit, now come on, homie. He talked about selling dope. And they arrested him for what he talked about. Twisted Black was the first rapper to get federal time for talking about dope in his lyrics. I'm going to cook my way to the top. The shit he was rapping about, he was doing yes, it. Yes, sir. <laughs> what up, though, man? What's up, man? Hey, yo. There he is. Oh, what man. up, family? Oh, man. <laughs> Come here, boy. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Look like him to me. Hey. <laughs> a quick story. <laughs> and I was born with this. <laughs> we was born together. When I got shot, nigga shoot me in my face while I'm on yeah. the ground. If you around here somewhere, man, you know something about Spine it, man. Angle. Don't speak up. Hey, look, Spine when I got angle. shot, he charged the nigga and put his life on the line for me, man. Man got shot. To get, to get the nigga off me, he finna shoot me again. He told, <laughs> and charged him, me, man. He put his life on the line for mine, man. I love this nigga. Oh, this is my dog, man. My life, God for life, nigga. Um, uh, wait, uh... That's good. Let me put it to you. You know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a stats kind of guy. 1991, <clears throat> we were the murder capital of the U.S. So it was tough. You know what I mean? As far as, you know, the, the streets, you know, because banging, they just hit hard and all of that. So, you know, it was, it was, it was popping, you know. But we were able to do, you know, we still had a good time. You know, we kick it in and I was a part of the problem. You know, I was, I was very active. This is a Tech 9, 9mm. Dramatic but effective in getting the city council's attention, these are the weapons gang members are carrying on the streets of Fort Worth. In the first part of May, we saw uh, gang warfare break out. A war in southeast Fort Worth that in just the last 15 days has killed 10 people and wounded another 12 in drive-by shootings. The body bag, a symbol of death and violence, a morbid reminder of Dallas's most violent year, and the numbers prove it. In 1986, there were 364 homicides. So far this year, 363 have died, one short of the record, with more than two months to go, and there's little police can do about it. I don't know that we can prevent any murders, especially the ones that occur uh, from arguments inside a home. Uh, you know, there's not much way for the police to respond to that. Police got the call to this house after a young woman, the mother of a three-week-old baby, was murdered. Dallas, 1990, murder number 263. It's an apparent burglary here at the location, and the victim surprised the burglar. Murdered by a burglar, apparently after drug money in a neighborhood infested with crack houses. Out here, folks don't care about statistics. Murder number 362 or 363, they worry about staying alive. I'm afraid to live any place. Dizel and J.D. Taylor have lived out here 25 years. Finally, they've had it. It's a neighborhood's been shook up because it's just a bunch of thugs walking around the streets. Elaine Jameson would like to walk away from it all. She lost a loved one today. Tonight, she's angry. It need to stop. It need to stop. You're surrounded with crackheads right today, right now, right here. It need to stop. And you lost a friend? I lost a very good friend. Some lose friends, others lose family. There are victims of the record murder rate in Dallas, spread out across North Texas. Marty Griffin, Texas News 5. Now, I'm about to tell y'all a little story about what happens when gangs and crack hit your city at right about the same time. Y'all meet us in Murder Worth. Yo, yo, what up, though?
Shay's popular. Salute the almighty mob. Now, when N.W.A. would burst on the scene in and around 1987, it would not only change the landscape of rap music, but also gang culture in the city of Los Angeles and cities thousands of miles away. Now, I'm definitely not going to go as far as special ed by saying that N.W.A. would cause the destruction of hip hop. But when you couple the group's rise with the emergence of crack cocaine just a few years prior, that shit was a Molotov cocktail. And though gangbanging has been around way before the group was ever thought of, and Easy e with his affiliations to Kelly Park was the only member of the group that seemed like he had gang affiliations, the group itself would portray a gang lifestyle on a scale that America has never seen before. So not only would the music influence the people in Watts and South Central, but it would also influence people as far as St. Louis, Missouri, and even Fort Worth, Texas. And in the time that the nation was in with the crack game, it would become like a soundtrack to the violence. And though his story would start in Detroit, Michigan, before he would move to Texas at the age of two, Tommy Twisted Black Burns would be caught in the middle of that storm. The year 1990 in Dallas was a dangerous year, with the city setting a record for homicides just two years prior in 1988 with 364. Just two years later in 1990, they would surpass that number with two months left in the year, with the city of Fort Worth not being immune. As a matter of fact, most people would actually blame this specific section in Dallas for the city's high murder rate. And we all heard about and know about the stories about how the New York hustlers would go down to Washington, D.C., Virginia, and North Carolina in the efforts to increase their profits in the crack trade. It was the same exact thing with cities like St. Louis and Fort Worth, Texas. Almost exactly how it was portrayed in the show Snowfall, though they weren't gangbangers. When crack hit, the gangbangers that was into the drug game had to be looking for expansion. And just like it would be depicted on the show Snowfall, though they wasn't gangbangers, the show would have them take a trip down to Arkansas in the efforts to expand their operation. Plus, if you do your research, crack would arrive in most major cities in the mid-1980s. So by the late 1980s and the early 1990s, the drug game would become very competitive. And Twisted Black was caught right in the middle of that storm, admitting in interviews that his plug not only bought drugs to Fort Worth, Texas, but he also bought Crippen. 1991 would be a pivotal year for Twisted Black as he would go on to form the regionally legendary group, One Good Side. But tragedy would also strike that very same year and almost cost Twisted Black his life when he would be shot in the back of the neck with a 12-gauge shotgun. He never goes into detail about the assailant too much, but in describing the incident, he would say that he played hard, and at the time, all he wanted was revenge. The shooting would push Twisted Black's destiny back a few years, but by 1995, the group would go on to reach iconic status in Fort Worth, and especially on the South Side, with their debut album, Look What the Streets Made, that would pretty much go viral in the streets. Twisted Black would eventually go solo in the early 2000s, and would even ink a deal with the now-defunct TVT Records, with his manager saying at the time that he was the hottest artist in the streets that didn't have a deal. But his road to success would again be interrupted in June of 2005 when members of the Midland Texas Police Department would execute a search warrant at the home of a female by the name of Angela Denise Hudson. Now, if the name sounds familiar, it's probably because you stumbled across a video with Charleston White speaking on her in reference to Twisted Black. Now, during the search warrant, officers would discover cocaine as well as other paraphernalia, like razor blades and different shit like that. But along with the drugs, they would find a Western Union receipt documenting a wire transfer of funds from Angela Hudson to Twisted Black. Angela Hudson, who would not only later that year, in September of 2005, would testify as a prosecution witness in the drug trial of an expiring rapper by the name of Zetrell Zet Perkins. 
would also flip on Twisted Black, naming him as her cocaine supplier. Twisted Black would go to trial the very next year in 2006, and with the crack laws being what they were, 100 to 1 at the time, and his previous enhancements, the district court would go on to calculate his sentence, holding him responsible for 1,022 grams of crack cocaine, while also granting a two-level upward adjustment in his sentence for obstruction of justice. By the time the people went through all of that shit, his guideline range was 360 months to life on two of the counts that he was charged with, and 360 to 480 months on another count. They would end up giving him a life sentence that he would eventually serve 17 years of after he would appeal in the changes in those crack laws that I spoke on earlier. Upon his release, he would find himself in some sort of back and forth war with another DFW resident, Charleston White, with Charleston White having a problem with one of the people he would be seen congregating with in a video right upon his release. But that's a whole nother story. Definitely mob ties worthy. If you know, you know. But y'all make sure y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box below. Y'all run it up. Y'all let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we need to tell, what we missed, what we got wrong, all of that. Y'all tapping with me directly. Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And until the re-up, y'all know the rules. Stay down till you come up. Shades Popular. Salute the almighty mob.